Happy New Year's, people. So back in the day, I was just reminded of back in 2004 and five, maybe three and four and five, when I used to go to uh, this bloke's house a lot. But Sam was always there, who is now a religious preacher. And I think a good one. He's a very, very level head. He's a good bloke. He's not a muppet. He's not a mug or anything like that. From my experience, he's a very reputable human being. A very good human being. But Bassam would always tell me about this one story. about, And he used to tell me a lot of stories. But he told me this one particular story over and over again more than any other story. It was about... The, the it all it almost always entailed the early conquests of Muhammad, but he told me this one about how the early Muslims were cornered and they were on this hill or something like a hill, something to that effect, and their entire religion could have been ended then and there. Everything was banking on them surviving this one incident, but rather than kill them all, the Christian, I believe it was a Christian, the Christian Lord or the Christian something, may have been a Jew, but from what I remember, I think it was a Christian, they let them all live and they just let them be. Now, whether that was because they thought it was a trap or because they didn't want, uh, the place they were hiding seemed insurmountable, it's irrelevant. The fact of the matter is, they knew and I think they wrote about it too. They knew that, um, except for God's grace, that had all been killed because they didn't stand a chance. And perhaps the people besieging them or who had hold them there didn't know that. But in any case, an entire religion apparently depended on that one day. And that to them was a sign of God's grace because they kept on persisting. They kept on getting away. But it always stuck with me, that story. Not because of that part, but because of the fact this Christian, or whoever it was, looked upon them with mercy and said, now, these people are fighting a religious and a holy fight in troubled times. These people, I guess in those days terms, aren't extreme, aren't terrorists, aren't troublemakers. They're just responding to the demands of their time. And the times then were just as malicious as they are now, probably more so. We underestimate the ability of past times to be similar to what we have now. But it made me think over and over again. What would a Christian do in similar circumstances? Not just now, but back then and all the way through. I thought of that story several times. What would a Christian do faced with similar circumstances when an, an entire people could easily be demonized and bullied back wherever it is wherever it is they came from? What would a Christian do? What would somebody with the ability or the know-how or the contacts to do something, what would he do? And obviously you saw what my answer to that was in 2014 remove the weeds, remove the, it, it, it was biblical for me, it was just common sense, remove the bad plants, the weeds choking up the wheat, choking up the children of God. And now, clearly that Christians like myself don't believe in uh, what Islam teaches and even believe it's a form of heresy that's just being up front there's no use ever in going around in circles and pretending something isn't what it is so that's that's a lot of Christ, the position of christians but that's also the position of, of catholics against uh people who believe in christ in a different way or who believe in spaghetti monsters and all weird stuff so heresy is just heresy as a matter of fact, heresy can come in the form of other Catholics. It's, it's nothing oh so bad that you're no longer a human being or anything like that. Now, long story short, I think, 
Well, I think Muslim communities and Christian communities have come together for a long time, but it's a lot of it's pretentious. A lot of it's like sitting down at the table, sitting down on the opposite side, talking, and it's like in their mind, they're, I don't feel right here. This doesn't feel right. This is like so fucking fake and so pretentious. But I think, especially in our country, where we will become a republic, there's a massive opportunity for Muslims like Bassam and so forth to get together with Christian community leaders, mostly from the Catholic churches, because whilst there are Anglican community leaders, they tend to favour the uh, British status quo, which is completely counterproductive to where Australia will be heading. Um, so Orthodox community leaders, Catholic community leaders, they're the sorts of people that the Muslims should be striving to build bonds with. If they can do that, then they're getting somewhere. Uh, so there's so much to learn from each other. There's so much uh, for both people, for both parties to benefit. And the end product will be the direction Australia should go. I spoke about it in 2014. And a lot of it is how Australia was in the 60s, 70s and 80s. Uh, when this was at a time where white Australians were not so much buying into the white Australian policy being abolished, but more so them putting on a pure act. Uh, it was a pure act that had to last X time so they could accomplish Y deeds. And then obviously you saw that wane around the mid to late 90s, even early 90s, to some, ex to some respect. You started to see that wane, that energy that was there for 10, 20, 30 years. It started to become, oh shit, the non-whites are taking over. We've got to do something about it or we're make fucked, which is pretty stupid. So, the how do I put it? That started to happen. This uh, great act started to die, and then we saw the age of terrorism and extremism, which is very similar to errors that occurred in previous times in European history in the 17, 18, 1900s, especially at times the British couldn't get their way, especially with France, because they lost more wars with France than France lost with them. I think a lot more wars and a lot more important wars. The French pretty much always kicked their ass. Uh, <laughs> and I think they had enough of it. So out came the false rules and the politicking and the scientific age. Although a scientific age did occur. It's just, it's not a British thing. It was a European or worldwide thing the Enlightenment and the Scientific Age. Uh, so what I'm saying is that fake error, believe it or not, should come back, but in a genuine way. So that fakeness of the 60s, 70s and 80s of white Australians to tolerate newcomers as genuine Australians, that fakeness is actually a fact of life now, because that's this is 80 years later. And if you go back to that time... That was just over 80 years later from settlement. A bit long, a bit. You get my point. So, uh, around 1940, 1950, 1960, that's how long it was from the time they got here from settlement. Most of them didn't come here in the 1790s, uh, the 1800s, uh, right on the zero zeros. Most of them got here 1830s, 1840s, 1850s, as free settlers. Uh, so, there's a lot of missing history. Not everybody comes from convicts, although a lot do. And I'm saying that now it's 2023, and this is what Australia is. Look back at the 1960s, 70s, 80s, which was a type of honeymoon period for all newcomers, proud, new proud Australians. That's what religious dialogue properly done can facilitate. Now, I note that 
when Muslims and Christians come together and talk peacefully and in, in, in true harmony, there can't be forcefulness. There can't be coercion. There can't be any trace of, uh, but no, this is this. You can't do that. By all means, it may be what's in your brain, what's in your what you feel, but that doesn't get anyone anywhere. It's it just it completely breaks down the discussion. If you want, there there are forums for proper religious debates. Go for it, absolutely. Nobody should hide something. If something be true, it should be argued. But that's not the point of religious dialogue, in that to that extent, to harmony, and these goody goodies with this magic multicultural wand have been doing it fucking completely incorrect people who are completely outside these Muslim and Catholic communities or Orthodox communities now, white Australians who know fuck all about being a Muslim Australian or a Maltese Australian or another Australian they can only see Australia from their lens and they're in full belief that this is their country or they've formed it and that they know how everything works. If that were true, they wouldn't have monumentally fucked up everything, whether it's environmental, uh, their own supposed culture, and so forth. So, no, Australians are just Australians, as I've been preaching since 2014. And uh, the point is, it's in the initiative of Muslim Australians and Catholic Australians, and uh, Orthodox as well, to to not come together as it's historically been heard, but actually want to come together for the sake of national harmony. Okay, we can see where this country's going. We can see the idea. We, we understand what you mean now. So Republic will come this way. We'll get together. We'll actually have a true barbecue, not just one where we sit there with hot dogs and we're like, hmm, yeah, hmm. You know, fakeness, left, right and centre. Actually get together and dialogue properly, plan properly. That's right, plan. You know, sit, in a, sit at the round table and plan together. Muslim Australians and Catholic Australians. It doesn't necessarily necessarily have to be a priest. It can be reputable or known community members. And at least that way you have a vision forward. And you can see this golden standard of what being Australian means. And that, no, we're not going to buy this white Australian inferiority fucking complex bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what a crock of shit. This is the direction we're going. We know exactly what this person, Nathan, for instance, is talking about. This is the direction we're going to go. We're all going to be content. This is the this is the direction of the entire, entire Australia. And then all of a sudden, once you see religious communities who represent a lot of Australians get together and you know, build this bondness in Australia, this, this type of fraternity... Then you start to see bigger communities like the Indian community, the Chinese community, who aren't necessarily Christian or uh, Muslim, although there are many members in the Christian uh, in the Chinese community who are Christian as well as Indian community, some Muslim. But you'll see the broader community, approximately a million Chinese, I think a million and a half, approximately a million or a million and a half Indian persons. They are a lot. And all of a sudden, you see this great big bonding. Oh, we see it's working. We see this is how it's done. Not by moving into some fucking cute little neighbourhood that's just being built so people can stay there concentrated and monitored by white Australians in the background as the you know, community elite, community leader assassins. That's not community. That's, uh, that's almost uh, blown out communism. That is just so fucking wrong. It's not funny. People live in these new communities under the, under the impression they're living in an Australian community, and they are. But they're doing so by these rules hovering in the background of how to think, how to be, how to gather, who can live there, who can't. It just doesn't end. The point is, all Australians should be united from fucking from sea to air's rock. And uh, this is how it starts. And obviously there are a lot of white Australians who are Catholic, for instance, from the very get-go, and at least at some stage, because they are Australian, at some stage when sense knocks into their head, they are also invited to the table, and it's just a united Australia. It's We're not saying that Australia isn't about all the things it is. I certainly... 
you certainly see me fighting for that. So <laughs> for, for someone to get an image in their head that I'm anti-Australian culture, it's just insane. That's exactly what I'm standing for, but it's how it's done, which everybody's been missing. So, no, we should be proud of all the things we do, sports and entertainment and so forth and you know, having some nice alcohol and the barbecue and if look look honestly if, if you don't if alcohol's not your thing then we can live with that nobody's gonna die you know, we love our fishing we love a lot of fucking things there's nothing Australians don't love it's because we're a fully free country there's just so much things to do and so much things to love uh, but you get my point and that's how the this, how do I put it? This invisible blanket of hostility just evaporates. So I hope that from the very get-go, Muslim leaders and Christian leaders see this as an opportunity to seize on. And one in which they can close white Australianism forever and just be Australian. 